Hey guys, welcome to the Joe Jaguar show today. Uh, today, maybe it's gonna be a little video, but that's okay. I wanted to show you guys uh, what this is and actually how to align it. So this is a Mead, uh, it's, it's called a Mead ETX, but really it's, it's kind of weird because probably some people are like, what are they talking about? But when you actually look at it, it actually, let me just see if I can get you guys closer to, to there. It actually says a 127 millimeter uh, diameter. So Mead calls it a 125, but it's actually 127. And I think it was the original Mead uh, 125 back then used to be 125. Now it's still called the same name, but it's two millimeters diameter more. So it's really, it says 125, but it's really 127, which is a full five inches where the first generation was 4.9 inch, basically converts to five inch as well. Anyway, let me show you how to work this in case you guys don't know. Let me see if I can get you guys a little closer. One, okay, now this is where your batteries go, right here on the base. There we go, pop it up. And it's four, uh, sorry, four uh, AA batteries on this side, four on that way, total of eight. Now I would probably recommend you guys get rechargeable batteries, but good ones. Don't get no dollar store, uh, you know, rechargeable batteries. Um, just goes in here and it gives you plenty of hours of uh, recording time or uh, battery time. Okay, just took me a second to put them back in. And again, you guys could also put a, uh, like an AC adapter or a wall plug power 12 volt in here as well. And then you won't need any batteries. But if you're in the field, in the country, and you, you don't have an option of, of plugging it in, um, you could use the batteries. Again, you can use the wall plug. If you have a power tank, it's almost like a marine battery. You can use that as well. Uh, type of thing. You have two, two auxiliary ports over here, and this one is for your hand control. So you could use this guy in a couple different scenarios. Now this is a computerized, um, the batteries are getting a little low. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, you guys could use this in a couple of formats. Now let's say you want to just uh, not use the computerized go-to, and you just want to point it at a planet, a star, uh, you know, the moon, anything like that. You could just use the hand control and just manually move it to any direction you want to. Of course, the only downfall of this is it's not gonna track. As soon as I let go of the buttons, it stops. So if you wanted just a quick peek of the planets, the sun, the moon, sun with a sun filter, um, you could do that. Again, you could just, you know, as the planet moves, put it at the edge of the field, let it drift, and then, you know, center it again. Um, so you can do it that way for quick sessions. However, in, uh, if you wanna do the go-to, let me see if I can actually show you guys. So first thing is, press zero. Hopefully you guys can see that zero uh, to a line, so zero. And it is, has, brings up the date. Now, I am not gonna change the day, the month, the year, and only because the day, tomorrow, it'll already be off. In two weeks, the month will already be off, and in two weeks, the year will be off. So it doesn't really matter. So I'm not gonna change it to today's date, um, but you guys can easily change it if you're following this. So I'm just gonna pretend it's today's date. You just push enter. Now it wants the enter the time, and of course, look for it says AM, PM. Let's just pretend we dial in whatever time you're dialing it. So I'm gonna leave it at 8 p.m. Uh, but again, for this little intro video, it does not matter. Enter your correct time, enter again. And is it day, daylight savings or not? Enter that. Then, okay, so now you can enter if you wanna be like true north or a compass north, because a compass north is still uh, about 10 degrees off. So let me just put this down and what you need to do, actually, sorry. So let me push enter. I'm gonna push one for I want true north. Now what it wants me to do is kind of align the telescope, like level, and just point it north. Okay, next. Enter, and it's gonna select the star. Now it's selecting Arcturus over there. 
So it's actually going to take, well, depending where the star is, it's gonna find this star, Arcturus. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem that people always get wrong, especially brand new people, because they think go-to telescopes does everything for you. Now, as you can see, everything was pretty simple, but once it goes to find a Taurus, it's not gonna be dead center. What you have to do is, it could be anywhere from five to 15 degrees off from that star. Now, if you're in a location that has three, four or five stars, brand new people are not gonna know, well, I'm not sure which one it wants, which ones are Taurus. That's why I recommend if you're brand spanking new to the hobby, this is your first telescope, learn the sky at least a year so you can learn the constellations, learn what stars. So that way, when it says uh, slowing to Arcturus, like I said, it's gonna be between five and 15 degrees off. You, with your eyepiece in here, slowly put it in the center and then you push okay. Does that make sense, guys? So this is the, pro this is the point where all new people get confused. They just either will push enter as soon as it stops thinking it's pointing right on Polaris even though it's going to be close again but it's not good enough see there we go so it's centering on centering on Arcturus uh, still slowly slewing although you can't center and here's where again people get it wrong so it says center Arcturus then push enter so again it is very close to Arcturus now it's daytime but it knows the star should be there right now so what i gotta do is put the eyepiece on here with the viewfinder uh put it in the viewfinder put it in the eyepiece and then center it as close as to the center as you can then you push enter guys you understand so a lot of people are just pushing center and it's again 5 10 or 15 degrees off from the real sky position uh, because it's close but it's not perfect and then they'll do that with the second star and then it's not going to be successful so again, this is where people always fail. So again, you got to, even though the telescope is very close, you got to put it exactly, and then exactly in the eyepiece, in the center. Then you push enter. So right now, because it's daytime and I'm not looking through it, I can't do that part for you, but I just explained to you how that goes. So hopefully you just follow that. But anyway, once you do that, then you push enter, and now it needs to go to a second star. So again, it's gonna to try to find Vega, which is in Lyra constellation. And again, it's the same thing. If you just push enter when it stopped for Taurus and enter for this one, it's gonna be off. You're, you, you could get an excess, uh, successful alignment. The problem is when you actually tell it, find me Saturn and go to, it's gonna be between five and 15 degrees off. Does that make sense, guys? Because you didn't do that final um, percent, putting it in the eyepiece. So if you do it that way, it might you know, go to the planet you want, the object you want, but it's gonna be between five and 15 degrees off, and then a new person is gonna say, it's not in the eyepiece. And the reason is, when it stops slewing to the two-star alignment, you're not finishing it off and putting it in the center of the eyepiece, the star it wants. That is the tricky part and where where and why people fail, especially brand new people. Me and the people who are, know what star it wants and then you put it in the eyepiece, then it's always 100% successful. So again, it's saying, okay, Vega should be around here in the sky. And again, it's somewhere between five and 15 degrees off. So I gotta have an eyepiece on there, center it in the eyepiece uh, type of thing, and then push enter. And then as you see, successful. And now I can start. Now I can start the mode, go to uh, select the object, the galaxy, the planet, and it'll be in the eyepiece. Okay, guys? So this is where I sometimes tell new people, learn with a manual telescope. Maybe it's a Dobsonian like one of these. Maybe it's a refractor. Maybe it's one of these type of telescopes. But whatever it is, I recommend you learn manually first. Uh, 
uh, it could be a, G a German equatorial, learn you know, how to use a telescope, how to focus a telescope, how to align it. If it's an equatorial model, how to polar align, how to move it and track the planets type of thing. And in the meantime, you're learning the constellations, you're learning the stars, you're learning where the planets are. And then um, you can graduate to one of these where you know what star it's talking about and how to put it in the center and get successful alignments. But anyway, guys, uh, also maybe one more thing I'll add. Now this type of computerized mount is not your entry level mount. Celestron has, uh, again, this is not an entry level one. This is the SE model. It's not a starting uh, go-to mount. Uh, go-to mount is like the Celestron has the GT models or the SLT models. Very similar, but the, the telescope is not as good quality as these ones. And these ones are a bit better computer, I would say. So uh, basically I probably would say start at one of those models. Once you learn those, the rest are pretty similar. Now maybe in the future, I will do how to align a Celestron SE um, model. But today, uh, let me just put this back in the hand control. Today's video is how to align this guy's go-to. It was pretty simple. But again, the reason why it always fails for new people is because once it becomes the two-star alignment, they're just pushing enter on both of them. It still, most times, will give you a successful alignment, but when then you try to find your object, it's not gonna be there because you didn't do the final alignment uh, or the calibration. Does that make sense? I'm pretty sure I probably repeated myself two, three times. So anyway, that's how you do it. Cheers. See you guys on the next uh, telescope. Joey, do you want to say bye to the viewers? Here, come here. Here, say bye to the viewers. Bye-bye. We'll see you on our next video. Cheers. Like and subscribe.